Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to give me your attention for a few moments because I'm very careful when I select a subject for our YouTube channel. At the same time, I want to be quite frank with you and honest with you as much as possible based on a lot of information that we gather. Now, it must be remembered that I don't just go to the internet to get information or the latest story, the latest rumor, the latest speculation. A lot of our uh, things that we deal with comes from individuals who know what is taking place or they know what is being planned. And some of them know what's being planned behind the scenes and they at times will share with us whatever information can be shared. Now this is not some type of, we're about to expose some great secret. But I do believe what I'm about to say is true. The world as we knew it is over. I grew up in the time of Andy Griffin, Leave It to Beaver, My Three Sons, and the Brady Bunch. And although I remember the 1960s, we lived in Arlington, Virginia, and my dad pastors a, pastored a church at Bailey's Crossroads for about seven years. And I was a young man. I was in elementary school and then went to junior high school while I was there in that part of the country. But we lived near Washington, D.C. We had a lot of people that worked for the government that attended my father's church. We had a very noted medical doctor that attended our church. And we also had some people that worked with central intelligence agencies. Now, I didn't know them as well as my dad did, but my dad knew them very well and pastored them. Now, I remember the 1960s war protest. And I remember what they called the hippie movement. And I remember uh, burning flags back in the uh, 60s, and, uh, and actually the late 60s, early 70s, right into the, right into, uh, to the time the Vietnam War was over. And so I remember living up there, there was always protests that were going on of different times. I remember uh, 1973, the decision that was made by the Supreme Court concerning Roe versus Wade. So I, in other words, I've seen a lot of things happen as it relates to changes in the United States, uh, reversals of laws, passing of laws, etc. But what makes the world as we knew it different now than it was? <clears throat> I believe number one, spiritually. Spiritually, the, the pure Christianity that we have known growing up is being mingled by so much false doctrine. People believe things who attend churches now, who call themselves Christians, but they believe things and they support things that are totally contrary to the Old and New Testament, meaning they're contrary to the will of God. And they will fight you over what they personally believe in their personal opinion. So the personal opinions are exalted above the Word of God. And then there's just some really weird teaching out there. We won't go into all that. Economically, you can see the shaking taking place economically, how they're working on either a global dollar or a cashless society or what they call a Fed coin. So all of this is in the talking stage, but at the same time, most of China is cashless. There are countries in Europe that use no cash. And the older generation of my age, which is 60 and over, we still like to use cash and spend in cash, but they're trying to change all of that and it will eventually be changed. So that is over. Eventually it's going to be over as we knew it. And then we have the political system. Now I remember in the 19, uh, 1970s, I'm going to be careful saying this, there was a man who has since passed away that worked for the Central Intelligence Agency in Washington, D.C. that was a member of my dad's church and he had great confidence in my dad. Right before the Watergate scandal broke on the news, he knew all about it. And in fact, he told my dad the details of it. And I, there's really one part of it that I've never heard told. I know what it is, but I don't think it's ever made the press or ever been told. Um, and so I'm not going to go into that. But I remember him saying, Richard Nixon will step down. And this is before it ever made the Washington Post, right? He said, Richard Nixon will step down because otherwise, if the truth of Watergate came out, there would be a one party system. And he went on to say how the, 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 the Liberal Party would be destroyed because of what they had done. Now, I'm not going to go into that, as I said a moment ago. But uh, what you see now happening is they're trying to create a one party system in the United States that does one thing that goes a certain way and anything outside of the box thinking contrary to that is ridiculed, persecuted, mocked, poo-pooed, lampooned, uh, destroyed by newspapers or whatever. So that's what's happening to create a one party system, which then is connected to the global system. And it's coming. Eventually, a global system is coming. They've tried it a couple of times and it's failed, but it's coming. So the world, as we knew it in the past, the simplicity, the simplicity of the gospel, everybody going to church, having your Sunday homecoming and churches being packed out with people worshiping God and all that. 
the days are changing. And so we need to be aware of that, that changes are here. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go with some change that you don't want, but it does mean that it will imp impact or affect us one way or the other. I remember in 1959 to 1969 in public schools, if you were disrespected and the teacher, you got spanked. You had a dress code. They let Bible uh, reading take place and they let prayer take place. All that changed. Uh, I remember uh, they would fight to keep a family together. If your family was having trouble, the church prayed and the people fought to keep the family together. Now it's very passive and it's like people don't even try and they separate, remarry, separate over and over again. And um, back in the old day, brother, if you lived in a house, you did work. If you lived in a house and you had a dad, you did yard work. You didn't sit on your, your backside lazily on the couch sipping uh, some soft drink. No, you worked in the yard, you cut the grass, you mowed the grass, you painted the house and you did chores. Uh, nowadays, people just literally do not want to work. And we have not only the Laodicea and lukewarm generation, we have a lazy generation. I think most of you will agree with me in that. Now, most people in the 70s and 80s, at least about, let me just say it this way, that 70 to 80 percent of Americans believed in the church and attended church, at least occasionally. Some of them showed up on Easter and Christmas, but at least they showed up twice a year. Uh, most people in my, in my day of growing up respected the local minister and the church. Most people loved God. They loved country. They loved the flag. Uh, they stood for the national anthem. They respected soldiers. And I, I'm just trying to tell you, it has changed. You know it and I know it. So here's here. Here's what I believe the greater danger is. I believe the greater danger in this transition that men or globalists or however you want to form them are trying to change is the destruction of religious freedom. Now, I don't know that there'll ever be destruction of total freedom, but I do believe there's control and there's manipulation. And everything is about a certain group of people coming together through technology to manipulate and control everybody. They are the elitist. However, my greatest concern is for religious freedom, religious freedom of speech and the religious rights to defend what you believe and stand against what you believe is unrighteous. And we know that persecution broke out in the early church for three centuries because the Roman Empire did not agree with what Christians were teaching and what they were saying. The bottom line is simply this. In this transition, we are supposed to be two things and we have to continue to be two things. Jesus said, you are a light, a city on a hill that can't be hid. And Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth. And if the salt loses its savor, savor it's good for nothing. We are to be the light. What does that mean? That we are to continue to preach and teach what we're teaching and preaching that will help the people despite what people say. And we preach it until we can no longer preach it or we're allowed to preach it. We must continue to be the light because if we go dark, the whole world goes dark. And I say we as believers. Number two, we're the salt. Now, if you know anything about salt, salt, when you uh, if you lose salt from your body, you become weak. You need salt to maintain your body. Number two, uh, if you um, know anything about salt, if you have a cut or a blister in your mouth and put salt on it, it can kill infection. So salt helps destroy infection and infection can be a picture of sin. I know you've never heard that before, but if you're the salt, you agitate. If you're the salt, you take infection and you can destroy the infection and bring healing. So we are to bring healing in a world that's infected. We are to be a light in a world that is in darkness. So I want to encourage you, whatever denominational background you are, whatever faith you claim in the Lord, I want to encourage you to continue to be the salt and the light. Now, remember this. One day we all stand before God face to face before Christ at the judgment. And he's not going to ask you what your opinion was, nor will he debate you theologically. He was going to ask you, did you know my word? Did you believe my word? Did you act upon my word? And did you love the father? And did you love people? Now, he will know the answer to that, but you'll have to answer for those things. So stay in the book. My, like my friend Lloyd, Floyd Lahan used to say to, to Perry Stone, Perry, stay in the book, stay in the book. And I have done that through most of my ministry. Thank God for it. So I just want you to just have hope that your future as a believer, the best is yet to come. Although there are some crazy times ahead, but we as a church and a body must stand together and must be united. We must support our ministers. We must stand with them. We must not listen to the 
naysayers and the demon-possessed people, but we have to stay in unity. Satan can never destroy a church that's in love and a church that's united, and neither will he destroy a body of Christ that is united around each other and in love with one another and is in love with the Word of God. So give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the programming on YouTube. Keep watching. We have something to share with you. Don't forget to go to perrystone.org and join us in one of our meetings when you can. Did you know that many people are inheriting their ancestors' demonic attacks? What is the root problem when you can win a public battle, but you keep losing your private struggles when no one is watching? How can you drive out of your life spirits of depression and cutting and mental thoughts of suicide? Is there a way to get your mind back when you feel like that you are, as David said, at wit's end? Are there cracks in your faith? Is life full of continual physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual defeats? Folks, I want to teach you how you can learn spiritual warfare strategies from the battle tactics of famous military leaders that when you apply these same strategies, they work in the spirit realm. I will explain how a scandal is designed to crack and weaken your faith. How will you overcome the biggest test that Satan sends you in your entire life? Discover how you can wear a shield of favor in your daily life. If you feel faint, weak, afraid, or faithless, you absolutely must read my 251-page landmark book, There's a Crack in Your Armor. Instead of losing all the time your spiritual, physical, mental, and emotional battles, go through these 17 detailed chapters loaded with spiritual and practical revelation and get ready to turn the battle forever and move it in your favor. I'm also going to include my two-hour audio CD teaching. I think it's the most important message all year long, what I have learned about spiritual warfare in my lifetime. The Lord impressed me to teach you what the Holy Spirit has taught me for the past 48 months or so and expose Satan's deception and his plots and explain how God's counterattack strategies will work if you apply them. Don't use the wrong weapon for the wrong battle. God has provided all that you need for each battle engagement. The book and CD are now available to the body of Christ. It doesn't matter what denomination you are or if you go to church or not. This is a resource that I think will bless you immensely. The book and the CD are available for your donation of $35 or more. Order by calling 1-888-21-BREAD or you can go online at perrystone.org and order that way. Or if you would prefer to send it through the mail, you can send a check to Perry Stone Ministries, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. This teaching and instruction is needed right now. I have never seen more people engaging in weird warfare and under mental assaults of the powers of the enemy. Folks, we have the weapons, we have the tools. God has given us the insight, and I want to take what I've learned 46 years of ministry, what he has taught me, and get it into your hands to help you be an overcomer. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. If you enjoyed this YouTube content, there's an important website you should know about, perrystone.org. Perrystone.org is an essential resource for the latest books, audiovisual presentations, and digital products from Perry Stone Ministries resources that cover the same kinds of topics discussed in the program you just watched. Stop in and see all that's available at perrystone.org.